Well, hi everyone and greetings from Northern Michigan. This is Bob the Science Guy and welcome to Trig on Tuesday. Today we're going to do trigonometry, but I've got something special for you. We're going to do another proof that I found the other day that I thought was exceptionally elegant and I think you'll enjoy doing it with me. Now, let's just go ahead and review real quick what we know so far. If you have a triangle like so, the sine of the angle alpha here is A over C, or the opposite over the hypotenuse. Cosine, likewise, is the adjacent over the hypotenuse. And tangent is the opposite over the adjacent, or sine over cosine. Now here's what we're going to do today. Let's look at these functions right here. What happens if we have two angles, angle alpha and angle beta? How do we find the sine of angle alpha plus angle beta, the cosine, and the tangent? Now what we're going to do in this episode is we're going to look at the sine and the cosine because the tangent's a little bit more complicated. But this is a beautiful proof and it involves the tail of four triangles. And here they are. One, two, three, four. So today we're going to do the full Monty. We're going to do algebra. We're going to do trigonometry and we're going to do geometry. So let's cue up the music and get going. So, okay, so let's see what's special about these triangles. We're going to start off with a rectangle. We've got right angles here, here, and here. I'll let you use your imagination of what the last one will be. But let's make a triangle right here. Okay, so there is a right triangle. Then what we're going to do is we're going to come straight up this way at a right angle and make another right triangle. Generally, what we'll do is we'll make that alpha and we'll make that beta because we're dealing with the sine and the cosine of alpha plus beta. So we want two angles that are adjacent to each other. And there they are. Now, what do we know about these triangles? First of all, the internal angles of a triangle always add up to 180 degrees when you're dealing with planar geometry. It's a little different on a sphere. You can have what they call spherical excess if you lay it out on the surface of the Earth. But on a flat surface like the whiteboard, the triangles are always going to have 180 degrees. So these are right angles. That means that these are 90 degrees. Likewise, that's a 90 degree angle right there as well. Now, let's look at this angle right here. What is this angle? Okay, because this is a right triangle, that has 90 degrees of the 180, which means that angle alpha and that angle have to also equal 90. So what's this angle? It's 90 minus the angle alpha. Here's where it gets a little cool. That's a straight line right there. That's 180 degrees. We've got 90 here. And we've got 90 minus alpha there. What does this angle equal? Well, if that's 90, that's 90 minus alpha, and we got to come up with 180 degrees, there's only one thing that angle could be, and that's angle alpha. Just like that one. Okay, so now we know that that's angle alpha. What about this angle right here? So this angle right here would be 90 degrees minus alpha and beta. That makes sense. So what's that angle right there? Well, once again, these two angles have to equal 90, and that angle is 90 minus alpha plus beta. So by definition, that has to be alpha plus beta. That's the size of that angle. That angle is the same size as that angle. Another way that you can know that is what's called complementary angles. These two lines right here are parallel to each other. We have this line coming through both parallel lines. That angle has to equal that angle. So now we've demonstrated what the four triangles are. Now let's go ahead and see if we can derive sine alpha plus beta and cosine alpha plus beta using our four triangles. 
So let's go ahead and strategize for a moment. We've got our four triangles. Now, part of the proof is that we need to know the length of one side, and that side is generally listed as one. So in our case, for our first example, we're going to call this side right here a length of one. Now let's go ahead and mark our angles. So this is alpha, that's beta, and that is also alpha. And then remember one more. That one is alpha plus beta, right there. Just to explain where the proof is going, do you see this side right here? We realize that that is that segment plus that segment. Likewise, this side is that segment plus that segment. So this is going to help us out quite a bit as we do this proof. Okay, so the first step in any proof is to find the problem. We want to find out what sine alpha plus beta and cosine alpha plus beta are, and we're going to use this diagram, which we've properly labeled, identifying the triangles and the congruent angles, and we're going to use it to figure out the answer to our problem. Now, what we want is we want sines and cosines. So by preference, we're going to try and only work with sines and cosines. We'll use tangents if we have to, but we want the answer in sine and cosine. So let's go ahead and figure out some triangles here. So what's this side right here? Here's angle beta. This is going to be cosine beta. Likewise, that will be sine beta. Because essentially what we have right here is a unit circle. And if you recall that, a unit circle is a circle with radius of 1. That becomes the cosine. That is the sine. All right, so here's angle alpha. What's this side right here? So what do we have? We don't have that side. We don't have this side. So what we need to do is just start with one of these sides and work with what we have. So since we're starting with that one, we're looking at the cosine of angle alpha. See how that would be? And the cosine of angle alpha would be x over the cosine of angle beta. So it would be x over the cosine of angle beta. Now, in order to isolate x, which is what we want, what we need to do is we need to move that over to that side. So what we're going to have is cosine alpha times cosine beta equals x. See how that was done? Pretty straightforward. So let's get rid of that and just write it in. OK, so just as easily as we did that, let's go find this side right here. Now, what is that side? That would be sine alpha equals x over cosine beta. And we just rearrange it the same way. We'll bring that over. So this becomes sine alpha cosine beta. All right, we're going to solve this triangle now using the same technique. So right here is angle alpha. This side, which we're going to call x, is going to be the cosine of alpha equals x over sine beta. And we can solve that the same way we did these. So we have cosine alpha sine beta. That equals x. Now we'll solve the last leg, that one right there. So what is that? Sine alpha equals x over sine beta. Once again, sine alpha sine beta equals x. So we'll put that right up here. OK, folks, we're in the home stretch now. Let's go ahead and have a look at this one. What's this side? Well, that's the opposite side from the angle. So sine alpha plus beta equals x over 1. 
x equals sine alpha beta. Likewise, that would be cosine alpha beta. We can get rid of that. So this is cosine alpha plus beta. Now we can solve easily. Now this is really a straightforward problem from here out. Our first question, what is sine alpha plus beta? Well, it's right there. And what does that equal? It equals that plus that. Make sense? So, and that is the identity for that. What about the cosine? Well, there's the cosine of alpha plus beta, and what does it equal? It equals that minus that. So let's write that in. So we've got cosine alpha, cosine beta, minus sine alpha, sine beta. And there are our identities. And that's how you, uh, and that's how you do a proof of them. Now, the question becomes is what happens if these are negative? Alpha minus beta instead of alpha plus beta. Well, all you have to do is change the sign. Remember that sine alpha plus beta are these two. Now, if you make this a negative and that a negative and just do it exactly the same way that we did before, the only thing that changes is those signs. And that's all there is to it. Now, in our next episode, we're going to do the same thing with tangent. Now, tangent is much more difficult than this, and you really have to think about it. So until then, make sure you hit that like and subscribe. I appreciate you stopping by and letting me partake in my hobby of doing some trigonometry. And I'll see you again in a week to finish this up. In the meantime, hit a like and subscribe, and stay healthy, folks.